الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي الحبه في الله as we said on countless times that knowledge of the religion of Islam is one of the highest duties that you can do and that it is unbefitting or not befitting of a person who worships Allah and follows the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to speak bad and ill of the ulama of Islam and to believe that the ulama of Islam are not doing their duty and to speak ill of them as many of the groups of Hizbiyah do. So many of them, they belittle the ulama when Allah has raised them up. Allah says that He will raise or He raises up those people who believe and are given knowledge, darajat. Allah says this. So what do we care if the takfiris speak ill of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah? And what do we care if people like Imran Hussein make ta'an and speak and slander the ulama of Islam and say that they're ignorant of certain knowledge that he happens to have about the UN and the New World Order? And what do we care if other people that are in our society that are supposed to be du'at, that are supposed to be calling to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have more or less abandoned aspects of that call and belittle the ulama, try to separate you from the scholars of Islam. I want to separate you from the scholars of Islam in Saudi Arabia. This is what they say, Habat Fillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Fi Kitabi al Kareem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah will raise those who believe from amongst you and those who are given ilm, who Allah has given ilm, darajat. He will raise them up. So Allah will raise the ulama up no matter, even if Ahlul Tahazib hate that, even if they speak ill of the ulama. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Inma yaksha Allah min ibadihi ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, those who fear Allah the most are the ulama. Allah said that. So, how is it then that you don't want to take the fatawa of the ulama when they speak and say, Do not join such and such group? Do not sit with such and such uh, political party? Do not fight with so and so because they're brutal and they're ignorant of the religion and they distort the image of Islam? Why is it that we race to attack the ulama and we sit comfortable in America and Britain and France and all around the world in Canada and think we can speak ill of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah? And get away with it. Our tongues are moist with the flesh of the ulama, those people who Allah has raised in and given darajat, given them ilm with darajat and fiqh fi deen. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man bihi fi deen." Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him knowledge of the religion. Who has more knowledge than the ulama? Who has more knowledge and understanding of the ulama of, of this ummah, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah? Who has more knowledge than them? Allah has given them fiqh and that's a sign that Allah loves them so that's why you want to be near the ulama that's why you want to study with the ulama that's why you want to withhold your tongue from the ulama and speak in ill about the ulama because Allah has raised them to an honorable station in Islam the Prophet Sallallahu said that the ulama what is al-anbiya that the scholars they are the inheritors of the prophets they inherit the hardships and they inherit they inherit knowledge of the deen because they help preserve the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They impart that knowledge, knowledge of kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam with the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. The ulama impart that knowledge. So how is it then we can turn around and speak easily about them and belittle them and say they're scholars for dollars, say they're scholars of the government, say they're scholars of this, they're scholars of that, they're scholars they're scared, they're scholars they're weak. 
وعياذا بالله من ذلك that goes against kitab illa wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that goes against the minhaj of the salaf and what we've been taught all about islam that goes against the nusus so how is it you can make your tongue moist with the flesh of the ulama in ahl khair with such ease while you sit in your room on youtube making videos and and doing whatever you do making fatawa and speaking ill about this one and doing this with ignorance I want to encourage myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam to adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, meaning we have to learn it and to seek knowledge from Ahl Ilm and respect them don't worship them don't blind follow them unless you uh, unless you, you need to in, in many of uh, the affairs but in Aqidah no you need to know those things in Aqidah and with regards to basic fiqh those things that you have to practice you need to know that but in other Amur we follow the ulama we have to follow them and our views should never be departing from the ulama meaning that we have a new view which the ulama from before us and the, and the latter generations didn't have so when we pick a view and have an opinion about an issue it should be within the context or within what the ulama, the scholars, the various scholars of Ahlul Sunnah throughout the ages, it should be a goal. And this is why the ulama say that whenever someone speaks about an issue, they say, Men sabaka biha the goal. Who preceded you in that statement? So that you have a salaf for what you said. Not that you came up with, if the ulama have two opinions, but you've come up with a third and a fourth according to your new understanding, your new interpretation of Islam. This is not permissible. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and bless us with a class with the bat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.